Enjoy the show. Play on the Protagonist. You are just as much as a member of Protagonist and Wallhangers as Mike is, as Chris is, as I am. You're, this is your platform, too. And <clears throat> it's kind of where we're going into now. Because I don't, I don't, I don't do this. The soft rolling that I just did, I do do that a lot. But foreshadowing, <clears throat> I, I was at work, and you sent a message out in our chat, and when I saw it, I couldn't believe what I was reading. You know, you, you like to think that, like, all your friends are almost like an anime. Like, they're all just having their best life. They're going out there, but they're all in that protective bubble. And when you went out to celebrate the end of Ramadan, there was a, an absolute, I, I, only word I can describe it as is a heinous act against fellow just community members. Uh, you were witness. Yeah, the peace of mind of that community was attacked. You were a witness to an act of shooting. And <clears throat> I can't stand like like a lot of people. I can't stand bigotry, hate. I, I don't understand it. I mean, we're all people and we all make mistakes, but to go out there and to attack innocent families with this kind of malice is it, 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 I, I I can't understand, man. You you were just out there. I saw the picture you put on Facebook and just I, I don't want to, but I kind of want you to describe your day, man. I mean, you were going out for and Ramadan, like we were, it was a thing while we're doing hit points and half measures that we had to, you know, start a little bit mm -hmm. later because of Ramadan, because I respect your religion. Your choice Thank you. is a hundred percent yours. And <clears throat> I don't see it. Honestly, I respect that you appreciate it and you find a lot of wisdom and knowledge from this religion but i know there's a whole lot of hate that comes with that because of the time that we lived in you know mm -hmm. that we were growing up and a lot of misunderstanding and absolutely it's first off <clears throat> I think I should actually describe to Projangers what happened is that there was an attack, a mass shooting, mass shooting, shooting. Um, in a sense, it was there was a shooting. There was a shooting at a mosque that it it's in Philadelphia, and what really hit me was that it was in the Parkside sector of Philadelphia. Because as soon as I see that, I'm like, what? Parkside? You know, and mm -hmm. the, in this, the, the, the immediate part after that is Philadelphia. And then I know you're closer to Philly than I am. So, right. I mean, it's rough for me to unpack. Because I have a lot of feelings in this because I feel almost offended because you were just trying to have a a good day with your family. And As a majority of the families out there were. It just that's what boils my blood. You're just trying to have a fun time with your family. And somebody mm -hmm. with an ego gets involved and just creates chaos, and I I don't like the sand stand on the soapbox for this reason, but I feel like there has always been a, a little bit of misunderstanding between Muslim and Americans. Um, mm -hmm. I I'm a parts guy. I a 
bunch of my drivers are Muslim. I'm, I have yeah. a, a body shop guy who speaks Arabic. He's my translator. Yeah. For I mean, well, guys. just one correction. Um, there shouldn't be any real distinction between Muslims and Americans because, uh, you know, the majority, the, the vast majority of Muslims that I've grown up with are, you know, natural born American mm -hmm. citizens for, you know, like three or four, maybe more generations. Yeah. Know, um, well, that's also you know, another uh, thing is that, you know, I'm a third generation American myself. My great, great grandparents came immigrated to this country. So it's not lost on me. There are different beliefs and, you know, structures and ways of life that other people have. You may not mm -hmm. understand them. You don't have to. Right. It's, it's, it's not your place to. Right. It's just exactly. you have to get along with the other person. So you're enjoying a an event with your family and a Ramadan, and there becomes an active shooting situation. And what mm -hmm. really linked me in on this impromptu podcast is your description of just the children. You got your wife, your child, you're running them to the car, and then you have to run back for your daughter. Yep. You have your other kids with your wife and steps step and their stepfather. Like there's a lot going on. But then you also realize you pick up the distress in everyone around you. You pick up the distress of the people who are it's not something that we normally see here. We see it on the news happening in, in a different country, and it's not normally focused towards people like you and your religion. It's it's not in this country, at least. It's a big right. thing now because of the world stage and what's happening, but to see that chaos unfolding in front of you what was just what was happening in your mind when it was going down well it was a great sense of betrayal and to really help you understand that i'd have to give you um kind of a rundown just a brief rundown on islam and the mindset of muslims specifically african-american muslims growing up um inside of the city and just like where we've come to and how, you know, we could get to a place like this because I'll, I don't wanna lay accusation on anybody. They still investigating the whole thing. So I don't wanna say yeah. what I, you know, I don't wanna point any fingers at any specific people at this point in time, but right. let's, just, let's just take a step back. Now we've been fasting the month of Ramadan, right? And um, this is from, so from, for the past, 30 days from about around five o'clock in the morning to approximately 7.30 in the evening. We're not eating any food. We're not drinking any water. You know, there's there's no sex during those hours. We're not, there's no smoking, you know, um, trying to stay away from foul language and impure thoughts. Complete and, and, celibacy. Right, so, so, the, the the goal is to gain uh, something called taqwa, which is a conscious a consciousness of God, right? Because this is a very personal thing. Your fast is a personal thing. You wouldn't know if I was if I was you know sneaking into the, the break room and pop a soda or something real quick, right? right? Yeah, it's between me and it's between me and my Lord. So um, this is this is what this is what we've been doing all month. It's a very spiritual very mm -hmm. spiritual time we you know we meeting up at the masjids at night to pray for uh, for long hours after fasting all day um a lot of times people begin to more closely observe their religion during the month even guys that you know might not have been practicing all year when ramadan comes it's like a click for anybody that has any kind of connection to islam right yeah. so it's, it's really a beautiful time for us and then at the end of ramadan 
is the Eid, Eid al Fitr, which is um the feast, the feast of um breaking fast. Mm -hmm. So, since my childhood, families have gathered together in that park. Sister Claire Muhammad Park is um, and the Sister Claire Muhammad School is something that actually my grandfather had a hand in helping build. Right. So, wow, that's amazing. Yeah. And he helped establish it. Right? Um, the Sabir family, I did a lot for that. And um, that's big, man. That's yeah, big. it is, especially it, for it a really park. Is. I mean, everybody can enjoy the park, but especially for something for your family, especially yeah, you know, something for you guys to enjoy and have to look forward to. Right, and and it wasn't just it, it's not just my family. You know, there's there's a lot of last names that i can run off that helped mm -hmm. like it, it was really a a community um project mm -hmm. to help build that school for us to have somewhere and it's a it's you know it's a yeah. three-story i don't know how many acres how, how uh square footage but it's a it was a really really big school kindergarten through 12th grade wow. and it was like a central hub for african-american muslims in the city um you no, know, in the eighties, in the nineties, and even in two thousands, and even up until today, right? So at during the Eid, we gather there, pray, go to the park, or we, you know, we would have the Eid prayer outside. Sometimes there's moon bounces, all kinds of things, just family fun, safe environment. We, you know, we would go from maybe like one Eid to the next Eid, and then like we'd go down the wild skating ring or bowling alley or. or or something after that this is my experience from, yeah. from me growing up right yeah. so, you know this this was a you know like a great time you know, like it's really time to celebrate and um almost really like a, to, to link it to uh the christian background but it's almost like that that favorite holiday easter christmas yeah. it's it's that favorite time of year where you get to connect to your family you get to have some special time and really, it, it evolve out is the word I'm going to use because, especially with religion, it's a very fickle topic, and mm -hmm. that's where I try to stay away from religion and politics on this podcast. But after today, and especially with you know, I try to learn something new every day. I expand my knowledge in books and you know, different podcasts and things that I try to learn. And the more I learn, the more I learn that we're all connected. You know, religion is just somebody's different view on how to worship. So mm -hmm. it's not something that is necessarily evil or something to be vilified just because certain people do things and they are part of a group. It's mm -hmm. one of the things that I think a lot of people just instantly just push a button and say, no, that's wrong. And I think that innate instinct is wrong because we're all just people. We're all just trying to have live this human experience. And right. that's what really it perturbs me so much on the events of today because you have a whole bunch of people just trying to gather together and celebrate and they can't mm -hmm. even do that without right. in getting traumatized because the children that was the text that really bothered me in yeah. our so hit points like, so, chat so so like so as i was saying you know you get an idea now right of what this day means from 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 what i've shared with you so far mm -hmm. right yeah so um it's just been now that it seems like uh there's a new element that's not that doesn't really have that attachment to the the level of respect and gratitude for for the masters or for mm -hmm this for this day right this this holiday because we wasn't worried about that you know and we would never try anything you know like it would never pop yeah. into anybody's head to to even have a fist fight you know that that would be that would be 
unheard of. And your like, parents and be your like friends slapping parents, your it, mother on Christmas. You it, no, it, exactly. you're not gonna do that. Right. Exactly. So 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 fast forward to today. Let's just get to it. Mm-hmm. Um you know, there was over a thousand people in the park. I was there with my wife and our three year old son. Well, it was my 16 year old daughter and uh, my two sons had come down from Delaware with their mother and and his, her husband, their stepfather. Mm-hmm. Now, it's it's understood that this is a community thing. Everybody's kids is safe with everybody out here. Yeah. Right. So nobody, nobody really stays with their kids the whole time unless they're a small child. They, you know, they old enough to run around. They right. old enough to run around. You stay inside of the boundaries and have yeah. a good time. Right. Yeah. That's it. So I'm by the uh, side of the school with uh, the moon bounces and my son's running through the little um, obstacle course moon bounce sliding down and everything like that. Um, bad timing. My daughter, my a daughter. Bit of shadowing, but bad timing. I mean, you're having fun yeah. in the moon bounce. This is not a bad. This is the the worst time. I thank God that my um my daughter had decided to take a break from the outside and went into the um to the musala, the prayer area, <sighs> to um to, oh, to just kick God. back for a little while. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah. One of my sons was also in there praying at the time, and another son was somewhere else. So basically, I've got I got kids all over the place here and everybody else does yeah. you know yeah, yeah. there's 13 year olds watching six year olds at the moon bounce you know there's yeah. teenagers getting water ice over here that or, kind of you know. family uh cookout yeah, kind it, of environment. it's like a, it's like a festival it's like it's almost like a um like a, a carnival yeah i think or um a festival yeah, so, is probably the better word festival yeah so it's so kind of like a festival yeah so um so, you know, we're sitting there and sitting on the grass or whatever, and I hear these pops, pop, 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 pop. I'm thinking, you know, that it's fireworks, right? And then maybe like 80 to 100 people come running past us with, with terror in their eyes, right? Mm. Mm. Screaming. So now what's so sick is I'm still thinking that it could be um, fireworks or it could just not be that big of a deal because unfortunately yeah. in this city blocks over, you might hear that, you know, um, some shots being fired or something like My that. My brother and I have, uh, we, we, we do a thing. I'm not going to call it a game because it's not a game. Um, but around, especially around July 4th is we call it, is it, are they gunshots or are they fireworks? Yeah, it's hard to tell the difference, and it's, unf- it's like it's 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 a shame that it's such a common sound that it really could be either or, and, and you know, any given time you hear it, people right? laugh when I say that. Could it be gunshots or could it be fireworks? But it's a legitimate thought in my head when I hear a loud pop Ooh. around here. You know, and I'm yeah, in. The, and we, we're, we're in the suburbs. Yeah, and we used to it, but I mean, like, it's really not okay to just live around. You know, like that. To live around gunfire that's freak that frequent that it it doesn't even put a, a a sense of fear or alarm inside of you when you hear it. It's just yeah, no. It's like popping a soda open, man. So, so it shouldn't these people be are running. like that. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be, be right. like that. It no. shouldn't be like that, and it shouldn't be like that for for kids, you know. A hundred percent, man. And and that, that's what that's what it really all comes down to. That's yeah. the, that's the end goal of what I'm getting to is that you know, yeah. like kids are growing up inside of this environment. Man. The it's, brains it's one thing for aren't adults. developed yet. They're not right. done cooking, and to go and, through a traumatic experience like that. It's it, it sounded silly when I was going through school. Like, hey, if you need to talk to someone, the ca- crisis counselor's there. But you re- you might actually need to, so you don't develop yeah. to be and a we, dick. And we neglect that, you know. Yeah. Um, and you are what you eat. Is that's that's not a statement about food, you no. know? What what you experience is what you become. 
it, so it, it's a little bit well, about it, it nutrition. A little bit yeah, about no. nutrition, but it's mainly about like the people you're around and all that. We're yeah. we're always it, talking about that on Perjangers, but it's very true that if you surround yourself by greatness, you will achieve great things because these people around you will move you to do better, to be better. And it rubs off on you. It shapes. It shapes you. You have shaped me, sir. Because in the automotive industry, there are a lot of Muslim people, and I have been friends with all of them, and they're the right people. I, I, you are the first person that I can say that when I heard of this, it it. it I didn't even know you were involved, but I felt disappointed, a little bit, um, well, obviously worried, but it's just the more you learn about people and how they react to things and everything, it's, it's, they all just get so formulaic in the response. And unfortunately, this is a formulaic response for our time. Mm-hmm. And that's what I want to try to draw out in this podcast is that just because you don't understand somebody doesn't mean that you have to just go out spewing hate, I guess, because yeah like people focusing on negative negative things you know yes. but you know i'm a i'm a, I'm a muslim i'm an african-american my father you know i'm a tax-paying citizen i wear a lot of hats you know if yeah. you don't like this hat whatever fine but i got you know 80 more that you probably would get along with just fine so let's one of on them that. is in the elite <laughs> eight uh uh at the heroic awards i must say but That's the thing, man. Like, you... uh, I'll say this. As a white guy, I don't know the struggles of my friends. I don't Mm. know your position. I don't know your station. I could never imagine your station. I had friends that would get tickets from cops, and I ask them why, and they just say, DWB. Mm. It's, 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 it's alien to me and especially a situation like this to where i can't understand why anyone would really you know strike out at some at at a religious group like this on our turf and i don't Mm -hmm. mean that in a cocky sense or a you know you know anything like that i just mean it as in the sense of I mean, nobody saw this coming. I, it, 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 yeah, you so, have an event like this. There's cops. There's a lot of th- a lot of people going on. Like maybe we need as a country to look into security a little bit better and not feel like they're just going to be watching us like Big Brother out of a George Orwell yeah. novel. So I don't want to I don't want to um, give the vibe off that this was an attack against uh, Muslims. I think that it was just from what I understand so far, they think that it was just um, some people that had some some drama between mm-hmm. each other and they brought it to this place. You know, yeah. one, maybe some people posting pictures of their location and where they're at enjoying themselves, not thinking anything of it. Yeah. And these other guys saw him and decided to come down there. And that's why I was telling that story before, because even if that was the case a couple of years ago, there's a, there's a level of respect where you just would not violate that place in that day. Yeah. We got to see you some other time. You know, we go, we get them the next, we'll get them next time. Yes. But now, you know, to, to the mindset of somebody to go into a, a place with, with hundreds of families, thousands of people, hundreds of, of, children and and you know and teenagers and just disregard all of that and start letting off is just it's sickening to me so, it is it's sickening is the perfect word 
because that's exactly what I felt when I read. At first, I saw Parkside, and I was like, oh, my God, Parkside section of Philadelphia. And I was like, okay, it's not me, but it could have been. It could have been my neighborhood. It could have been people around me that were affected by this. And that's what mm-hmm. I really wanted to drive home. And that's why I wanted to fast lane well, this podcast is because people need to understand. They need to realize that it's it, if you're focusing on religion when you're you're hating on somebody, it's not the religion. It's a person. I'd say probably 90% of the time, it's probably the person. It's not the religion. Because you can look at it, uh, I bet I'd say 80% of the people in that religion, and you will find good people. People are either good or they're bad. And it's the hard line that we're walking on. Yeah. So, so I mean, don't think that just because it was the next neighborhood over that it didn't happen to your neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Because what we're going to get to eventually is, like we saw, we talked about the you are what you eat. The trauma that these a lot of people just dealt with, a lot of young people they have to grow up with. And if we don't address that, if that continues on, then you know it spills out over wherever they go. They carry that with them. You know, they carry that into your neighborhood. And it's not it's not a black thing. It's not a it's not a Muslim thing. No. It's it's a it's a it's a it's a violence thing. Yes. You know, that the that it and it, it's a it's a crime thing and it's a disregard for life that the violence and, and just thing intolerance. Is you know. Yeah, yeah, so even even the way you were talking, like just this mindset of intolerance is harmful to us as a a, a country, not you know, not just Parkside. All yes. of this, every you know, hundred percent. So, so we were out there, and um, the shots start firing. People start running. My son's inside the moon bounce. So now, you know, my wife is panicking. We're trying to find him because there's there's you know, this is a it was a big giant uh, yeah. moon bounce. So a bunch of kids were in there. Now the thing's all rattling because they're trying to get out because they're panicking because everybody else is panicking. You know, that's the the, the real danger. Because, came from it was maybe like 30 shots fired and of course that's that's a danger Jesus. but a thousand people inside of you know not that big of a space all of a sudden running creates a danger itself yeah and in the microcosm inside of that moon bounce you know my son's one of the smaller kids in there and they're all trying to get out you know mm-hmm. he could have somebody could have stepped on his arm broke his arm inside of there anything could have happened yeah right so so eventually we were able to get him out and you know now it's like okay next thing where's my daughter right so i tell my wife and my and uh take the baby get to the car you know pull off out and i'll call you when i um when i can now there's people running one way away from uh the gunfire and, and the shooter and then there's me running through them to find you know my child I'm asking her, you know, stay where you at. But the way the crowd is moving, she's being pushed and moved, you know, trying to avoid the situation. And while I'm running, I I, I saw the eyes of, you know, and if anybody listening, you know, just imagine your niece or your little cousin or your daughter or or whatever at 12 years old with more real life fear in her eyes than you probably ever seen in anybody crying because they can't find their little five or six year old brother that they were watching at the moon bounce or they can't find you know like a seven year old crying because they can't find their parent because there's hysteria going on out here yeah so it to me it was akin to an act of terrorism even though it may not have been the intentions of the people in, involved in that, but it caused terror. I saw terror inside of children's faces. By Genuine, definition, real life I terror. would say that was terrorism because yeah. you're at a happy event and all of a sudden chaos breaks out. Now you're worried about your own well-being. 
You're worried about your safety. We're, you specifically focus in yeah. on your wife and your kids. Yeah. So um, I want to tell you right now, you were the superhero of that situation, sir. No, not just. Don't, I mean, it was no, a lot of people don't there. It, don't break it down. In your personal circle, you stepped mm-hmm. up as a man and you protected your own. That is to be accommodated. You no, did you. not shake away. You fuck. You stood by your family. You made sure your family was safe first. I respect the fuck out of you for that. Because yeah, there's a lot that of heroes big. out there, man. It's it big. Was people, it, was, it was people out there. It was people out there pushing kids underneath of trucks and SUVs. You know, somebody, another mother found our son before we found him crying, just crying alone uh, and was and, and was running to pick him up. My, but, you know, my wife was there and she ended up grabbing him. Yeah. But, you know, like everybody out there was on point. They We were all out there looking out for each other, you know, trying to keep each other safe as much as possible. You know, and but that um, brings so, it back to community, and that's what you see in that moment. In the moment of chaos, community binds together. Yeah, and, it's not something. It's not something that you can. Um, you can say, you know, you can pretend or theorize on what you might do in a situation like that, but you never yeah. know until you end it. It's not. It's not. Those aren't thinking moments. You know no, what I mean? Like no, that's just, not. That's time for action. That's what I wanted to highlight on your actions because when everybody's running away, you're running towards it. That's mm-hmm. not the action of somebody who's just trying to survive. That's some. That's the action of somebody who's trying to protect. And that's what I really picked up from this whole just little thing that you put out in the chat from your experience. And I knew I needed to capture it because... You're a great dude. You're an amazing father. And I feel like you had you had an amazing trial. You know, I mean, in Greek myth, you probably would have been a hero after this. Because it's the good person not relinquishing their character in the face of adversity. You were in a stressful moment, but you were still a lean. You were still yeah. a good man <laughs> that I know you. You were the great and powerful a lean in that moment, protecting your family. And that is what I wanted to highlight, really, as my secret little <laughs> operative for this podcast is that you are a hero today, man. A hundred percent hero. Diary of Sweet Pea aside, you were the hero, not a construct. You were for your family. Well, I mean, and that is the most important thing ever. Is sticking your neck out for your family. And I've I respect the fuck out of you, man. You've yeah, I ran mean, towards well, that, danger to protect him. So since you brought it up, I mean that is a situation like this is the um i guess it's the kind of like the inspiration for the book that i'm writing for the diary of sweet pea because it's about it's about childhood trauma it's about a child growing yeah. inside of a, a violent environment or you yeah. know like coming to age in violence and how it shapes them you know mm-hmm. versus the you know uh, having them coming from a nurturing home and, and parent so i mean that is just ironic that it happened like that but that is very very ironic. very much I mean, what i'm you know like what i'm trying to highlight yeah right? it is it's not it's not it's not the uh it's not the first time that something like this has happened inside inside of the city i've heard all kinds of horror stories from my friends telling me about their kids seeing acts of violence and unfortunately they have to 
process this as just a part of life. Mm-hmm. That's that's terrible. It is. So like we gotta look at that. What's what's the what are we doing? Like, you know, what are, what are al- we doing? I always like to point out that the person you are an- interacting with on your day to day is just a ball of trauma that somebody left you with. Because that's what it is. It's that person was damaged. And and you being understanding people, we may go into this person and try to figure something out. But it's just way too dark and deep for, you know, even a work friend, you know, we'll say. Mm -hmm. So it's one of those things that I think with podcasts like this and also a general conversation between people. I was I I was raised Episcopal and it's pretty much like Catholic light from what Robin Williams told me. Um <clears throat> it's me and you Catholic light and Muslim we're friends. We don't I I literally don't see your religion unless you're, you know, pushing the podcast back a little bit <laughs> turn to Ramadan. But even then, I don't mind it because I'm an idol. Um, I just, I feel like a lot more people need to understand the person that you're talking to. Yes, we all have our different background situations, but we're all people. And that trauma that that last person left you, maybe you could try to help that person. Maybe you could try to, you know, do something for the good of everyone. It's, yeah, I it, understand it, where it, another person is coming from. Have a little empathy. Yes, empathy and kindness will go a long way. And I think that's what people really need to latch on to now, especially in the culture that we're in, is that you could just bitch about anything online. And you see this. People like how you bitch. They're like, man, I really like how you, how you, you know, you're bitch, right. <laughs> bitch those guys out. You know, man, you're so, and then that inflates the ego. You start thinking, I'm the next Jesus. And that's where, probably not to that level, but that's where a lot of misunderstanding comes from is that a lot of people just, they don't want to listen to the whole message. And mm. when you, any religion, I'll just point this out. Any religion has the same message. Don't be a dick. I mean, it's probably rule one. I imagine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a lot, a lot of it. A lot of it is um, character. A lot of, a lot of it is just for the benefit of yourself and your environment and the people people around you. you know? So just generally being a good person will probably yeah, exactly. probably fill out all those edges and you know, I mean plenty of them. The it, vast majority just, of them. Absolutely. You just gotta be a decent human being. I don't know I don't know how that's so hard these days, but you know. Mm-hmm. It is. And so, man, I'm so yeah. glad we got to do this podcast because I think we went a lot of places that people needed to hear because especially from the era that I grew up in, which was the George Bush era, it was, you just feared Muslims. You hated Muslims. Mm-hmm. Muslims are my best friend. Fucking love them. Mm-hmm. And that's why mm-hmm. immediately <laughs> after today, I had to have you on. I'm going to fast lane this podcast because I think everybody needs to just realize we're all just people just damaged mm-hmm. by the last asshole that affected us. So if we can all just agree, put the guns down, stabby things, yeah. probably not yeah. a good idea and work off of that and try to understand each other because a lot of things can be worked out through understanding the other person's situation. 
You don't know that person's mental health space. You don't know what they were going through. You don't know what they're, how they are when they're reacting to you. And with all the variables that go into this, I'm just going to stick with be a good person. It'll probably all work out. You got to value, you got to value life, your own life and, and other people's lives. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of these situations, a lot of these situations only matter because you let your head become an echo, echo chamber mm-hmm. until that one moment is all you can hear, is all you can see out of all of your past, present and future. So you're ready to throw it all away because this this one moment is all that matters. And if you just step back for a second. And let it be the small thing that it is. I guarantee you know the majority of these these altercations will go away, because it's not it's not worth you know what you have to give to 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 settle it in the, in that moment. Well, hundred um, percent. So 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 yeah, man. I you know I was running trying to find my daughter. Um, I get to the doors. I got to you know, jump over a, a, a crowd of people to get to get into the doors. When I get to the to the door, there's a, a, a woman, an older woman on the ground in front of the door getting ready to be trampled. So, you know, we had to stop to help her up. Oof. And they're on the other side, because it's, it's the two door uh, entrance on the other side. There is a man on the ground. Um, in the process of actually being trampled, we had to push the crowd back off of him. And again, these are all just people that's just in wide eyed terror trying to get yeah. into what they hope are a safe place. Ugh. My daughter was moved all the way to the rear exit from just the, the, the flow of the, uh, the crowd. Mm-hmm. I get to her and, um, you know, I'm getting her out of there at this point. There's cops coming from from all angles. I don't know if you saw the the helicopter view of the news, but it had to be like yeah. 80 cop cars out there mm-hmm. at least. And probably was like two or three districts down there, man. And it was um, you know, from what I hear, they they have suspects in um in custody now. They think that it was just you know two people, like I said, two groups that uh, were shooting at each other, and then, then the police got involved swiftly and, and um, got the situation under control. At least um, they got in there swiftly. Honestly, I yeah. mean, there was this. I'm glad. I'm glad a lot, a lot of people got hurt, man. So. There was this whole wave of defund the police, and I always thought that was a wrong idea. Like, God damn it, you need to fund these people. All right, these are the guys that are going out and responding to acts like this. They're responding to domestic abuse. They're responding to things they shouldn't even be responding to. And it's it, it's one of those things that when you see people acting and in this respect and doing their job, it it makes you feel good. Because you you know you have that support structure there, like it should be, um, and yeah, they you were, have they those were definitely um, appreciated that day. Today, their presence was appreciated today. Um, so they 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 you know they got the situation under control. We was able to eventually get out. My 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 two sons made it home safely with their uh, stepfather, which was a blessing that they you know like they were able to get you know home as well. I think that the the biggest problem was just the fear of the crowd because there was one volley, and then maybe uh, five or ten minutes later there was a second volley, mm-hmm. and things you know really kicked up then. And like I said, people were in the threat of being trampled, knocked over onto, you know, concrete or underfoot and things of that nature. So I'm just really glad to finally, you know, made it out there and, and get home safely and be able to, you know, report back in to everybody. And then like, you know, like as I'm sitting down, I'm like, yo, this was this was a crazy this was like an active shooter situation where there's there's a yeah. large crowd of people running from gunfire from one point to another and 
and that's why you know like my heart really goes out to all the children that was out there that day and it's really unfortunate and if and if anything that's going to be highlighted from this podcast i will hope that we would take a step back and start to look at you know the world that we are creating and the environment that we create and for these young people to come up in even if yeah. we can't save the 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 adults if we could save the next generation then it, then it all stops yeah and we can't do that if we're not thinking about them you that's need, our ju- it's, it, yeah it's your job as a as an adult right for any child yes. you know all children are innocent so that should be that should be in the nature of human beings to to want to protect them and if that's the case then think about what you're doing to them even if it's indirectly you might not be pointing a gun at them but if you shoot in 10 feet away from them you affected them for the rest of their life yeah that's the problem that's the problem that's what we officially call a problem when a gun is yeah. being shot 10 feet away from you but and it, so, or if you create in a city if you create an environment inside of the city where like we said is it fireworks or is it is it gunshots you know it's the same joke that that we having about that is the same joke these kids is having about it yeah and that's not okay it's it's not so. man it's <laughs> it's one of those things that it's why i had to highlight this because i feel like me and you we have the perfect dichotomy to explain this out to people because me as a as a white male i have it i i actually told some of my black friends uh in the past like oh no man i don't think racism is Racism the thing. I was quickly, quickly, <laughs> very quickly, uh proved wrong. And it's it's one of those things that it doesn't it's not just race. It's religion, it's so many things. You can hate somebody for infinitesimal amount of reasons, and somebody will co sign on to that. The mm-hmm. harder thing to do is to understand the uh, the other person's perspective and see where they're coming from. Mm-hmm. If you can eliminate yourself from a situation and see the other person's perspective, that's success. If you can't, then your ego is involved, and that's mm-hmm. when you start to get it starts to get a little hairy. You know, I mean, it's. It's not something me and you can fix, but it's something we can try to inform our viewers on. And that was my overall goal, is to look at that person across from you as a person. And don't have, be a dick. <laughs> you know, they have a they have a wife, they have a family, they have sons, daughters. Who are you to step outside of that? Mm-hmm. You know, you may be in a bad mental space when you react to someone, but that does not mean ever that you can take their life. Yeah. It's not your place. And it, it 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 it's it's not something that ever sits right with me, especially because I believe we can all learn from this and try to just at least be a, a little bit nicer to somebody around you yeah, mental mental health is important so if you have the the ability to even possibly any resource that you can use to to seek a professional even if you think you don't need it therapy.com I, I, backslash I, bears I, I, yeah i think that um you know for a time I, I've seen a therapist on a regular basis. Uh it's nothing to be ashamed about. It's huh. nothing like it's, it's extremely healthy. It's like going for for a regular checkup or a doctor visit. It's a chance for you to decompress with somebody that doesn't have any skin in the game for you. Mm-hmm. That's a you know, like a consummate professional. Yeah. And you can get a lot off of your chest and a lot off your shoulders and, and like talking about things helps you work some things out. A lot of problems that we have, maybe we have them because we haven't for so long because we don't talk about them. Physical health mm-hmm. and mental health. So, Especially uh, mental health. Oh, yeah. Nobody likes to talk about mental health. And right. it's one of the nobody most important wants to things. Unpack that. 
Nobody wants to unpack that, you know, that thing that happened when you was a kid or that relationship that, that, you know, like you brush it off like it's not a big deal Mm -hmm. when, like we said, you are what you eat, man. That that shapes you. That stays with you. Even if you don't think about it anymore, it becomes part of your programming. Yeah. So you got to examine all of this stuff that makes up who you are so that you can function properly. Right. Or understand your understand your functions. Yeah. So you're not, you know, like you have some control over over yourself, get some sense of agency back. So, um, yeah. The, um, check out check out therapy if you if you if you can, and, and suggest it to other people and just get rid of that stigma mm-hmm. that it's a um, you know, like some kind of negative thing or some kind of weakness to do things like that. It's um, perfectly normal to ask for help. You know, right. I mean, even myself in my day to day, I find it hard to ask for help because I find this my ego gets involved and I feel like I have to do this. And really, I probably get it done quicker with somebody else's help. It's mm-hmm. that little thing that you have in your day that it's just a thought and you just easily explain it away. But. That thought is a process in your brain that will continue to, you know, grow and it will continue to fester. I'll say no, no man is no man is an island. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And 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 we was created as taught inside the Quran since we've been on the subject on and off of the subject that that mankind was made from different tribes and nations so that we could get to know one another learn the differences of each other and and you know like celebrate those differences and understand those differences of each other that not actually, so we can get into actually, a highlander battle and, and the, oh you no know. but that actually it, it it makes sense because they keep pushing homo sapiens back and adding in the denovians and uh uh i forget the other name of the other people race but there were Homo sapiens lived with other beings like the Denosians and, you know, other humanoid like people back in Mm -hmm. our evolution. So, yeah, you got that kind of thing of being able to adapt, I would hope. Mm -hmm. I would. Yeah, I mean, even like, even in today's age, man, you know. I got. I I I come from a different tribe of people than you do, right? From our race, our upbringings, you know, your your house to my house. There's going to be differences between people, right? Mm-hmm. We don't have to let those differences between us divide us. Yeah, we can come together. We can understand them. Hey, I do things this way. You do things cool. I do things this way. Let me cherry pick a little bit from out of, you know, like what you what you do, because, you know, I like that recipe that you got. (laughs) Let me get, you know, like, all right, cool. I like how I like the way you do this. So, I mean, like, that's the point of it. Yeah. So we can have a flavor of of life. We're not all just a cookie cutter, monochromatic person. Mm -hmm. It's not just not just the copies of all one person. We all individuals that we should, you know experience those differences in a positive way and that's what you were talking about with you know uh what you said before because it it i feel like we have a overall kind of swing with our genetics unfortunately Mm -hmm. and there's a lot of hate in there but there Mm -hmm. is a little love uh Mm -hmm. the love is usually a little bit conflated sometimes um, it can be, you know, uh, off like we're saying, mm-hmm. but I think if you have an honest conversation, you can come to an understanding with another person that you may actually learn something that you didn't mm-hmm. know. You know, I it, it, it's. I've never, I've always tried to learn something. Every single day when I wake up, that's one of the first things that I think about. What can I learn today? So 
I try to keep that mindset. I know not everybody has that mindset, but if you can learn something, at least one thing a day, I think it would help a lot of people because it would show you that what you knew yesterday paled in comparison to what you'll learn tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. But I think this is the perfect way to end this podcast off. Um, I needed to have you on, man. I needed to have you on. I'm going to fast lane this shit. 